Where is your freedom? Where is my freedom? It seems like it's been taken away. And when you start to lose your freedom, you start to question, well, why? Why am I losing it? Where's it going? Who's taking it from me? And these are very serious questions. Uh, freedom is a word that I, um, I'm very endeared to, the word freedom. I talked about it in other, in my other videos. Uh, freedom is in the offering, it's a vertical word. It's in the center of the offering. It intersects with harmony, eternal, and cooperation. Eternal cooperation gives you freedom and harmony. That's how I look at that. The grid correspondence is 07. So the way I have a grid, uh, I look at this as a grid, the offering. If you go to my website, brandofferings.com, uh, you can download for free a uh, one of these grids and you could color in the words. And the way I did it is there's horizontal words and vertical words. And the uh, horizontal words start with a number and uh, so, for example, you would, abundance is a word in the offering. So if you, abundance is 15H. So you would go down to line 15. You would go across to where it meets the column H. And then you would start the first letter, abundance, and then go across. So freedom is a, a vertical word. So those words start with the um, letter. So, oh, you go over to... In the alphabet across the top, you go to L M N O P, right? You go to O, and then you go down to seven lines down across, and then you start the word freedom vertically, and you spell it out. So that's how I designed it. So I talk about the grid correspondence of all these different words. So freedom is a vertical word, the correspondence of O seven. It's uh, upright, right in the middle of the offering, and to me that's significant. And freedom is a word that I've thought about so much because I felt and still do feel not free or in bondage. And yeah, I don't think anybody escapes those feelings at times. And, you know, we hear people say, oh, well, freedom is a state of mind. And, and yes, that's true. Uh, really, everything in life is a state of mind. Your health, your, your wealth, your happiness, freedom. So I think we all know it's a state of mind, but there's also this reality that we have to live within a society or you want to call it a system or the collective. You know, you can't do what you want, outwardly speaking. So sometimes, uh, yeah, you could you can have your freedom in your mind, but if I want to go do certain things in society, I want to drive, you know, 100 miles an hour down the road, I'm, I can't do that. I don't have the freedom to do so. You, this outward freedom has a lot of constraints so that makes you say, well, we're not free. And even try to own anything. A lot of times people, uh, if you don't have money, you know, maybe you, you're not doing so well on a financial spectrum. You say, well, you know, other people are lucky and they can do whatever they want. They have money. And, you know, I'm here to tell you that's definitely not true. And if you talk to anybody and they give you an honest answer who has a certain amount of money, they'll tell you they're not uh, free at all. They're bound to that money. And actually, we don't own anything ever. We we were in our society, our collective system. You really don't own anything. Uh, people say, well, I own my house free and clear. And no, you don't. Uh, you know, just don't pay your property taxes. And uh, within a matter of months, you won't own your home. It'll be up for a share of sale. And if you do something wrong uh, or you're... Uh, in trouble of some sorts, you know, and they can come after your assets. So you really just have a privilege or a right to use. You don't really own anything in this in this world, except your thoughts. And that brings us right back to this word freedom. And so I've struggled with this, probably like you. And what I've come up with is true freedom. And I, and I came up with this only from the offering, gave this to me, but true freedom we can have if we're within the grid of the offering. So if we can keep it in context and in lockstep with all of these other words, we can enjoy freedom. 
And part of that is that state of mind we talked about. We can't have everything we want and do everything we want, but we can think about it and change the way we th- we process that information. So we do have that freedom. And freedom is truly the ability to think, to, to have any situation and think about it any way you want. And that really can be summed up with your attitude towards life, how you look at life, and using all of the opportunities when they're presented to do that, to to use your mind for mental health, using all of your freedom to choose. Now, we don't do that a lot of times. We think, well, if we don't have a little, if we don't have 100% of our freedom, we don't have any. A lot of people think that way. So what I do is I look at it I try to make these analogies. Uh, if you, everybody's had French fries or potato chips, for example, and you go to a, a place and you get some French fries, invariably one or two or a small percentage of the French fries will either be burned or something you may not eat. Um, they're small or the skin is on them, whatever. But we that doesn't mean you... You don't order the French fries. I mean, there's an expectation. Oh, I'm going to enjoy these French fries. But we know not every one of them is going to be edible and and taste the way we want or whatever. So, well, that's life, right? I mean, you can't have everything. But if you can accept the things you can't have, that's a form of freedom because the acceptance is a matter of choice. So you actually have the freedom to choose that mindset. And I'm saying now that with the uh, state of affairs we're in, uh, in this world, and, and I think we've, as a society, and many people have lost their way. I do believe that. So, so the, what, what I also think is, how do we, we know how to gain our freedom in our mind if we want, through our thinking and our thought process, and how we make decisions and we choose to live our lives. But then how do you deal with this? How do how does the the collective society how do we start losing it outwardly? So we understand the in, internal freedom that we have in our mind, but then we do have this this other aspect of it where you know there have been wars and many many millions and millions of people have died. They've had no freedom. Some people have never had experienced any outward experience experience of freedom in their life at all. You go to some other countries and there is no freedom. There's no freedom at all. So it's easy for me to sit here and say, oh, it's a state of mind. But the reality is uh, I've never lived that. I can't imagine it. But I bet you in some ways they are better at controlling their thoughts than maybe I am because they've never had it. So they've always, they, they never experienced outward freedom, so they've put all their attention into their inward freedom. And conversely, if you've come from a country that's had a lot of freedom, like this country in America, we've we've traditionally we've had freedom, at least some degree of it, with the uh, Bill of Rights and first and second and third and all the amendments, right? So it gives us a certain degree of freedom outward. And maybe we focus that so much on that that we don't look inward because it was so easy. So it's possible that when you have the external freedom, you don't really develop your internal freedom. And if you have no external freedom, you are forced to deal with your internal freedom. And I actually think that's where we are now. And you say, well, how do you get to the point where you lose uh, the, how do you get to the point where you lose your external freedom? And I would just say, I think we get there when enough people uh, give up their freedom to choose and they lose their freedom and they allow other people to choose for them. And eventually, once you get over that critical mass, this is all my opinion. This is the way I'm thinking about it. I'm not reading any books on this. This is just my opinion. But I think when you get enough people that give up their freedom, then you lose it. Uh, and on the collective level, outwardly. And then that collective societies, they have systems, right? We have governments, we have systems. Then those systems try to retake control by controlling the individuals. 
So that's no different than, you know, a young couple going into a relationship and then one person in the relationship is trying to change the other. They go into a relationship and it's like, oh, I'm going to, you know, you have to change for me. So I think it's the same thing that uh, we lose our freedom collectively when enough people give up their power. They give up their power to choose. They don't have a good attitude in life. And attitude is really how you think about things. And it's also freedom, true authentic freedom, as it is in the offering, it is awareness and consciousness to me. And, and true freedom is accepting. Acceptance is a word in the offering. It's, uh, it's at the top. And that is a great correspondence of 1H. And that's at the very top. We, we have to accept the things we can't change. But you use your power everywhere else you can. So acceptance is an important concept because it's like it would be no different than when you, you open that bag of French fries. You see the bad French fry and you say, that's it. And you throw the whole bag away and you don't eat any of the french fries because there's one or two that are bad. In life, you're going to get things that happen to you in life that you don't like. But that doesn't mean we give up our power and we give up our power to choose and you give up your freedom. Because ultimately, freedom is your divine, individual, sovereign ability to control your mind and operate it. And nobody can take that away. No government, no family member, nobody. That's you. That's all you. That's 100% you. And it's pure, which is also a word in the offering. Pure is at the bottom. It intersects with the word surrender. And pure has a great correspondence of L23. And it's right in the center of the offering, almost in the center at the bottom. It's a vertical word. So pure freedom really is these other words in the offering. Freedom is being fearless because if you're, if you're fearful, well, you're not free. You're, you're afraid of something. So now, now you're not free. What do you do when you're, when you, when you're in fear? You put your head down, you go hide, you don't do anything. You, you, matter of fact, your, your systems even shut down when you're under a certain level of stress, right? So true freedom is being able to think about life, your life. Think about your life and how you're going to control your life and what you're going to do with it and how you're going to think about it. Look, everybody has, has trouble in life. Everybody struggles with, with similar things. Yeah, yeah, some people have other, you know, maybe you have health issues, you have finance issues, relationship issues, but everybody has big issues they have to deal with. Everybody's wondering, uh, you know, what is life about? When am I going to die? I don't want to grow old, you know all of these things. But your real power is when you could think about these things and say, wait a minute, we're going through life. We're all going through together. We're just passing through. Don't hang on to this flesh and the, this experience as if it's, that's it, it ends. But that's also a mindset. And you look at the word eternal and it, and it tells you that we, we are, eternal is another word and it intersects with the word freedom. And uh, eternal is... Uh, is, has a great correspondence of, it's, it's a horizontal word, and that has a great correspondence of 10 O. This it doesn't end when your life ends. That's why it doesn't matter how old you are. You're never too old to change your mindset, to change your attitude, to forgive yourself. Forgiveness is a word. It's a very important word. It's, the, it's, it, it's a, such a key word. It's a vertical word. W9, forgiveness. It's another... The vertical word to the right in the middle of the offering centered to the right there. You're never too old. You could be 99 years old and you can adopt a new mindset and you could be free. So freedom is how you grow because when you make choices, you can make mistakes. And when you make mistakes, you can learn from them and you could make mistakes and you could make the right choice. You have all, all sorts of opportunity, but that's true freedom. And then when you make the right choice, don't you want to take credit for that? Yeah, I did that. Or if you made the wrong choice, but you forgive yourself later because you made a mistake, well, you, you know, aren't you proud you forgave yourself and you learned a valuable lesson, something you're going to, that, that ultimately that lesson turns into wisdom. All those lessons in your life manifest 
ultimately to become wisdom. You become wise. So, you know, freedom to me is is very important and it starts in our mind. And there are times like right now where we're being tested. We are being tested by uh, our freedom being take, taken away on the outward level. Now, how we manage that or deal with that on the outward level, well, that can be discussed. You know, I guess you get to a, a tipping point, which we've been there before. But first, you have to reclaim your inner freedom. That's the first step. And you have to do that in a calm manner. And you have to say, okay, I accept what's going on. Acceptance, top word. Right there. And, and uh, I'm not giving up my freedom. I'm not going to give up my happiness and my joy and peace. And uh, my goal is, is um, peace and harmony, both words in the offering. And I do believe there's a limit to how much outward freedom you can give up before you have to do something. And I'm not going to discuss what here. That's not the purpose of this talk and what that looks like and how it's done. I, this is a very complex world. We have billions of people on the planet. I would like to think the uh, redress can all be done through energy and, and, st- and state of mind and through prayer and peaceful noncompliance with a lot of this stuff. You know, I mean, we're, you say, well, what are you talking about? What, are you, what freedom? Well, you know, just the fact that our government is so big and powerful that it's taxing people to death and and uh, oppressing people and and this goes at any level and it doesn't even apply to right now in in this climate today. It's it, it's been like this for decades and decades since the beginning of time. Actually, I mean, you know, government. Who was it? One of the founding fathers said, you know, uh, it's a necessary evil. It's something that it will grow and consume. It's like a parasite. Government is like a parasite. It needs to be pruned like anything. So what I suggest here for you is to, and me, is to uh, reclaim your inner freedom and know that nobody could take away your happiness, your joy, your peace. They could put you in a prison cell. They can take away your stuff. But there are people in prison that have more peace of mind and more freedom than the uh, prison guards. Or, you know, somebody said, what, the bars are on both sides. They're both looking through, you know, whether you're a prison guard or a prisoner, you're both looking through a set of bars. You know, there are plenty of people that have been held captive or prisoner. And uh, there are many books and great people that know way more about freedom, inner freedom than I could ever speak of. But it can be done to achieve that. And it has been done. And great people that have been tested have found pure truth and pure peace and pure freedom. Those are all words. Pure is a word. Peace is a word. Freedom. Happiness is a word. They found it all in their mind. I wish I could do that. Matter of fact, half the time I'm talking like this and I'm making this recording and reaching out, I'm really talking to myself. I'm just trying to put it out there into the universe for me, too. I mean, uh, I need to work on my inner freedom. There's no question about it. I realize that more now than I have in the past. I've taken it for granted. But when you start to lose it on the outside, your outward freedom your freedom with other people. When you lose it there, that's when you look inside and you say, okay, I'm losing it all. What do I do? It's amazing what the mind can do, the power of the human mind. And it's tough for most people, me, me mostly, uh, I've been so blessed my whole life. You know, you enjoy comforts and of life and uh, you don't struggle as much as some people are, have it so difficult, but they're better at so many things. That's the amazing thing. So uh, it's really how you look at it. But I know a lot of people right now are struggling with freedom because of what's going on. And I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like to be told what to do. I never want to hurt anyone. I never, I will never steal a thing from anyone. I don't want to, I want to be a, a contributor to society. I want to be productive. I help people all the time. I'm kind and generous and I'm, I'm thoughtful, but I don't want to be stepped on or tread on. 
by anybody, not just the government, by anybody. I don't want to be abused. I don't want to be taken advantage of. I don't need to be, also, I don't need to be told I need to help someone or to be charitable. I, that's in my instinct. I, that's, that's something I am. That's it, who I am at my core and my essence. So I resent when someone says, oh, you got to do this or you got to do that. Like when a government does that or people tell you how to, what you should say or, or not say, freedom, freedom of speech. I don't, I don't want to be stifled. Even the word tolerance, you know what happens? A lot of people tell you, oh, you need to be, tolerance is a word in the offering. It's actually a, uh, a vertical word with a great correspondence of C5. And that word is abused a lot because people say, well, you need to be tolerant of this and tolerant of that. And then it's, you're told what you need to be tolerant of. And for me, tolerance has to be understood in the context of the offering. And also, I believe that tolerance means you being tolerant of the intolerant. But I, I am tolerant as long as I don't have to give up my freedom. So I'm not going to tolerate because freedom's another word and I never want to be in conflict with the grid. So if you're asking me to be tolerant, but to give up my freedom, well, that's not going to work for me. If you're going to ask me to be tolerant and give up kindness, or you're going to, I have to be tolerant, but I can't have my laughter or uh, my honor. Honor's a horizontal word, right? Below tolerance. Honor is a grid correspondence of 15B. But if I have to give up my honor, someone's other, uh, some other idea of tolerance, is I going to give up my honor? No. No. And I'll, so like for me, when I think of tolerant at my house, you know, there are bees. Sometimes you'll see a wasp nest. We have a lot of wasps and bees up here and, and we have a ton of chipmunks and mice. So there, there are sometimes a wasp nest will be on my house. And, you know, if I walk by it and it's up at the eve and it's far enough away, I don't really care. I'm not even going to, I, I know people all oh, get rid of it, you know, but I personally don't care. My wife is a little different. She's like, kill it, kill it. I don't want to get some, but I, I don't care. It's like, so it's, it's 10, 15 feet away and I can walk in and out of my door and there's no problem. Yeah. I tolerate the bees. We all have to live together. I don't have anything against them, but when they're right near my door and they don't let me in, well, now I'm going to, what do I do? I'm just going to eliminate them. I'm going to eliminate it. Does that mean I'm not tolerant? No, because at that point, they're interfering with my, my ability to be happy. One time I went into, my dogs have these little shelters, and I had to go in and grab a dog bowl, and there were, were black wasps or hornets. And I went in like two feet, I grabbed the bowl, and these things just attacked me. I got stung in the eyelid. My lip was bleeding. My face blew up and it hurt. Oh, it hurt. So, you know, normally I'm tolerant of them, but I went out that night with two cans of spray and I killed every single one of them. So that's how I look at tolerance. It's within the grid. But if you're going to try to take away my freedom, then you're, you know, that's, uh, and that's why these words are together, by the way, because it's easy to pull one word out and misuse it or use it to favor one motive or maybe a political agenda or something like that. So when I use the word tolerant and I leave it and it has to remain in the grid, it has a whole different meaning. And you take the word cooperation and it has to stay within the grid. So you, I want cooperation from my fellow human beings, but I want, you know, I never want to give up kindness and, you know, loyalty and grace and surrender. I mean, cause then it's not real cooperation. Then it's like more like coercion or something. But if I take that word out and separate it from the grid, you know, like you'll hear, you know, you might hear, uh, the government or police or somebody. I'm just, I'm not, they might say, Oh, we need your cooperation. You know, there are different types of cooperation. So I, um, has to stay within the grid. So these are tough times for everybody. We've been locked, locked up, told all kinds of different information, hearing all sorts of different things, but, um, 
in the sea of different information, the one thing that isn't different is most people are locked down in one way or the other. So I guess the, you know, in closing, freedom's been on my mind. Hence the reason for this talk. And uh, I imagine it's on everybody's mind because I look at it like you could be free or you could be fearful or you can be fearless, which is a word in the offering. It's a vertical word. A3, it's on the left side, upper left side. You can be fearless and that will give you your freedom. And you could you could act fearless too and act tolerant those are both where act is a word it's a horizontal word it intersects with with freedom 5a tolerance is a vertical word that intersects with act and it intersects with teach so freedom has been on my mind it, because I've, I've i feel threatened to be quite honest with you in many ways and i know when i'm feeling that way that i need to work on myself i need to i need to go to work because I'm, um, I'm not thinking with, within the grid 100%, and I need to work inside, in my mind, and I have to rebalance and recenter, and I have to realize there's, there's bigger lessons here. There's more to learn collectively, individually. You know, this, this is all, at the highest level, this is all unfolding just as God wanted, and there's nothing that needs to be done, you know. And that's not an easy place to be for me to think that way, but my, my uh, truth tells me that's the case. If God created everything, he created everything. He, the good, the bad, the ugly, he, he, my creator. Uh, well, who am I to judge what he did then? So I have to get into that mindset. I have to think like God and be okay with this. And uh, I have to accept the fact that it's not always easy. So th that's why that word acceptance is there because you... you we are here in the physical and the non-physical, and we have to balance these two, and they're, they're always locked at the hip, and you have to work the two together. And your flesh is saying, my, my carnal mind, my brain, my primitive mind is thinking, I don't like what's going on. They're taking away my freedom. I need to kill all the wasps that are trying to sting me on the lip and the eyeballs. Uh, but it's an inward journey. It's an inward journey, that's for sure. And that true freedom... The true freedom is only going to come from within our mind, period. You know, if you had 100% freedom and they say, oh, do what you want. There's nobody. There's no government. You do whatever you want. You'd be, you'd be complaining as quick as anything. I know I would be. Wait a minute. We need this. We need order. We need laws. We need that. It's too crazy. There's too much freedom because we are dealing with humans. Uh, and that's on the ego level. So anyhow, find your freedom. Find your peace, find your truth, and find your happiness all between your ears. And let me know how you do with that. Thank you.